Are you ever not going to fall for that? I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't feel My mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper I got nightmares in my head, I fear Thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. If you're unsure how Alex Cox was recruited or how he was instructed or why he went along with Chad and Laurie's crazy schemes, bear in mind he's Laurie's brother, do yourself a favor and watch Mad Max Fury Road. In one of the subplots, Nux, a sick war boy, basically a pale ailing pawn used as cannon fodder offers to nab Furiosa in exchange for glory in the afterlife. He's told instead to put a bullet in his skull and in exchange he will be personally carried into the gates of Valhalla. I myself will carry you to the gates of Valhalla. The key word here is exchange, it's quid pro quo. Nux is sick, he doesn't have long to live and what's more In terms of the status quo, he is pretty much at the bottom of the heap. Hence his fascination with the afterlife, where a status boost is instantaneous. Die, give your life, and suddenly you are elevated to hero. Hey Martin, if I get on the rig, there's a way inside. What is your name? It's Nox. I'll pike her in the spine. Keep her breathing for you. No, put a bullet in skull. Next thing, Immortan Joe sprays Nux's mouth with a chrome spray paint and says, You will lie eternal, shiny and chrome. Do you see the transaction? If I take someone's life, then you will give me a ticket to heaven, to paradise, to Valhalla. It's a simple, logical transaction, but of course entirely fictional unless you believe in it. Now, using some of Nate Eaton's courtroom summaries, specifically related to the blessing Alex receives, consider just how similar Alex in Idaho is to Nux in Fury Road. Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do. If you're enjoying this analysis, please like, share, leave a comment. You can also hit the thanks button and let's get started. So yesterday there was a witness on the stand, Blake, referencing a patriarchal blessing that was found on Laurie's iCloud. Patriarchal blessings are used in the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Alex's blessing is derived from a well-known LDS ritual, obviously adapted and customized for Chad and Laurie's benefit, just as the ritual in the Uh, Mad Max movie is something that has been adapted in some way to suit those circumstances. In a desert world where vehicles are basically a sign of, the only sign of status, being shiny and chrome is sort of one's highest calling. Now in the same way that Nux receives a blessing that the rest of us know is worth little more than the breath Immortan Joe uses to express it, Alex's blessing isn't worth the paper it's written on either. Chad was not authorized to give the blessings. We can see quite clearly here how Chad had a God complex while Alex had a pawn complex, but it's only going to work. It takes two to tango. It's only going to work if someone has a pawn complex, which which is another way of saying they're receptive to someone with a God complex. And then, of course, you also need someone with a God complex who wants to use somebody else for their own benefit. Of course, there are a lot of people like that out there. Now, Blake then moves to admit a recording of the blessing. Chad gave his blessing to Alex Cox, and uh, Nate Eaton provides a link to that recording. It was given in November 2019. Now, it has to be said, we're going to listen to it in a moment, In the context of himself playing God, Chad can sound quite warm and fuzzy. So we hear Chad giving a blessing to Alex, and he says he's part of the church of the firstborn, kind of says all sorts of things, says that Jesus Christ has authorized this blessing, 
Well, that's nice of Chad to say, but uh, you know, in terms of somebody needed to authorize it, certainly the church hasn't. As the blessing is playing in court, Nate Eaton says that Chad looks at the blue screen above the witness stand and then looks down. Is he a little embarrassed? Chad says he wants to open the portals of time and he sees Alex on the third creation being a warrior, always seeking to do what is right. And this is where you kind of get a sense of Chad's storytelling ability coming to the fore. Chad says that Alex was selected by the Savior himself to be part of the fourth creation. It all sounds marvelous, doesn't it? He says great warriors and powerful goddesses were needed. You were selected to help protect your sister. You helped her in numerous probations to be a defender. And you progressed and were selected by the Savior himself to be part of the fourth creation. Great warriors were needed in that creation. Powerful goddesses were needed to be protected and you were selected to help protect your sister. in numerous probations as a defender. You have a special bond even from the pre-mortal world. You connected there. And as she grew in power, you were right there beside her. Now, this is a huge concession because by November, Alex Cox had already murdered four people. That's the date of this uh, patriarchal blessing. So by describing these murders as helping her, Chad's saying to Alex, you were helping her. We clearly get a sense of both Chad and Laurie's agency vis-a-vis Alex. Then Chad tells Alex he has already assisted him and Laurie in ways that can never be repaid. This is devastating to Chad's defense. Now, according to Nate Eaton, the jurors were listening intently at this point in court yesterday as Chad told Alex that he had to go to great depths to achieve tremendous heights. You had to go to great depths to achieve tremendous heights. What do you think Chad means when he talks about great depths? What do you think he means when he talks about tremendous heights? Within the confines of their belief system, what do you think are the tremendous heights? And think about that also in Mad Max Fury Road. What would be a tremendous height for Nux? Then Chad says that the Savior is saying to him, to Alex... At this, it sounds like Alex is whimpering in the background. If he had any doubts about the dirty work that he'd been doing, these are washed away now by Chad's words, by Chad's hypnosis. Chad blesses Alex with knowledge that he will now move forward as a true warrior in ways that can be demonstrated through physical action and spiritual power. According to Nate Eaton, Chad tells Alex he will be known throughout the world for his good-heartedness. I see you as a messenger of God, Chad says. Chad begins to cry and says Alex will be a prophet who will give tremendous blessings to people and raise their vibrations. Chad tells Alex that he will know where to be before natural disasters happen. He will be on location to protect church leaders and will save little children from floodwaters. Chad is crying and sniffling. He also says that Alex will literally start glowing. Of course, that's the same thing Immortan Joe promised Nux in Fury Road. You will ride eternal, shining and crowing. Your spirit will leave this body and then be greeted wholeheartedly and welcomed by the Savior himself. And I myself will carry you to the gates of Valhalla. Alex Cox died less than a month after this blessing on December 12, 2019. In Fury Road, the war boys are treated as and see themselves as disposable. Nux ultimately sacrifices himself to save his friends, just as arguably 
Alex did. Blake asked the detective if he heard the voice of Laurie Vella on the recording. Blake says that he did. Duncan says a lot of blood... Duncan says a lot stood out to him in the blessing. The date was November 24th, 2019. Duncan says the Church of the Firstborn stood out to him and the statement Chad said, and perhaps most significantly the statement Chad made that Alex had already helped them. Yeah, you have an audio recording of a convicted co-conspirator Laurie Vello and Alex and Chad with his hand in the spiritual cookie jar. Again, we can look at this and laugh. But there are Nuxes and Alexes out there that drink the simple Kool-Aid as though it's Holy Communion. And if we pull out from being ensconced in this whole psychology, what is it all about? What is all of this sacrifice for? Well, it's so that an alpha male, the alpha male in this story can get sexual satisfaction at almost everyone else's expense. We see that with Immortan Joe. Well now, isn't that the moral of the Chad and Laurie story as well? I'm not going to take it further than that. In fact, I'm not sure if I'm going to do too many more of these analyses. It's just really not uh, worth it for me in terms of work. This is my job when I get a thousand views per video. I'm really interested and invested in this subject, but uh, not too many of my subscribers or certainly not too many people following this case. Nate Eaton has definitely done a great job in um, being the definitive storyteller. I've also got something to share, but, uh, you know, it is what it is, which is why I'm not covering it live anymore. It is very interesting how at the same time that we're dealing with this, there's another sort of cult that's involved in criminal, uh, criminality, God's misfits. And you kind of get a sense how people reject government authority and then what do they do they make up their own and uh, they are then very easily corrupted by their own desires and of course this whole thing of not believing in law enforcement and being anti-government is being pushed by a lot of people including on youtube and uh, you might say well that's fine and i agree with it well the opposite end of the spectrum is this sort of thing People are people making up their own belief systems and then crossing legal lines on their way to their own self-styled fairy tales. You know, another example of this sort of fictional thinking, magical thinking, is the Boeing CEO being rewarded, being given quite a lot of money when the company itself isn't doing very well. And so you have this kind of strange thinking that's disconnected from reality in all walks of life. And so if you found this video interesting, I'm going to take this thread into a, another story or two that we're going to deal with today. So uh, look out for that. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you guys next time.